Amen. <laughs> so, so we sing happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jeffrey. Happy birthday to you. Hip hip. Hip hip. Hip hip. <laughs> well done, Jeff. Praise God. 95 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God, buddy. <laughs> that was lovely. We never thought you'd get there. <laughs> Praise God. Isn't it lovely, eh? Very special day, the day God's people are born. <laughs> born with a plan in them. And here we are. 67, aren't you, Jeff? 67? Yeah, yeah, 67. Praise God. Intersected by the Holy Spirit. How long have you been born again? Praise God. Mate, thank you, Lord. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. Amen. That's wonderful. Isn't that lovely? Praise God. Well, praise God, we're blessed. You, you, you keep coming back. <laughs> we are blessed. Amen. We are blessed. You're part of the mob here. <laughs> Glory to God. That was absolutely beautiful. Now, I went to the toilet earlier and I walked in and the actual, <laughs> no, too much information, but I walked in <laughs> and the aroma of the Spirit of God in this place as I opened that door was absolutely beautiful in that worship. Absolutely delightful. Amen. Do you know you can sense the presence of God? And worship takes you into that place. Had a new muso today, Maurice. We want to welcome Maurice. Well done. Bass guitar. And as always, <laughs> our stalwart, our anchor on the keyboard. Just wonderful. Thanks. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Praise God. I think that's all the notices out of the way, isn't it? Joy. Let's pray. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Oh. It's just so easy to work in an atmosphere of the presence of God, isn't it? And he's here. And he's here. Ah, oh, glory. And he's here. Do you know if he can fill you, he can use you. If he can fill you, he can use you. Oh, glory to God. It's true. If he can fill you up, you know, his goal isn't just to fill you up. <laughs> it's not just to fill you up. It's that you, it's, yeah, exactly. He fills you up for you to allow him out. Amen. Every one of you, atmosphere changes. Right. Just coming together like this to worship God, atmosphere totally changes. Like, there's, there's a healing atmosphere here today. There's a wonderful anointing for healing in this place today. Amen. You just got to reach in. I remember years ago when the Lord wanted me to, to remember how I'd asked for a certain thing. And he told me I'd asked according to his riches and glory would he supply me this particular need. And I'd forgotten. I started off in faith, ended up in fear, and negated the very thing I'd asked for. Well, oh, this is a word for someone. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> negated the very word I'd asked for. 
the very thing. And I said, Lord, forgive me. He said, that's all right, Raph. He said, repent. That's why I've given you repentance. Repent. Just You know what repent means? Turn around. Go the other way. 180 degree turn. <laughs> he said, just repent. He said, now ask me again. And I said, oh, okay. So I asked. I said, Lord, you'll supply my needs according to your riches in glory. He said, now grab it. It's there. Look through the eyes of the spirit, not the eyes of the flesh. Look through the eyes of the spirit, your spirit people. Look through the eyes of the spirit and reach out and get what you need from God. It's already there. It's already been given to us. Everything we need has already been given to us. Nothing lacking. This isn't my message, by the way. I'm just getting you prepared to receive from God today. Amen. Reach out and get what you need from God. Go on. Every one of you have got different needs. Every one of you, some people need healing. Some people need relationships to be fixed. Some people were praying for their sons, their daughters. Oh, oh power of God's here right now. Sons and daughters, we just hold them up before you today, Lord. Oh, Jesus. We just, actually, there's a few people, that's... That's one of the key topics today, the Holy Spirit speaking to me. Sons and daughters, just lift them up before God. Bring them before the throne of grace. You're going to get answers to prayer today. There's a miracle day. This is a day of miracles. This is a day of miracles. We serve a God of impossible things. And all we need to do is ask and believe and don't doubt for a second. And if you've got anything against anybody, release them now so it doesn't hinder your prayer. Oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you, Father. Sons and daughters. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Healing. Healing. There's healing in this house today. There's healing in this house today. Jesus. <laughs> oh, glory to God. I don't know about you, but I'm getting it. <laughs> Do you know when you, when you ask for something, you should receive? Do you know that? Come like a little child. Just come and receive from God. Come, whenever I ask God for anything, I, I come like a little kid. I come and I expect. I ask my dad and he gives it to me. Amen? Because he loves me. And he loves you. Oh, Father. <laughs> Sorry, he's here. I just don't want to come out of this at the moment. He's here right now. Thank you, Lord. All your needs are met according to his riches in glory. Oh, thank you, Father. Yeah, some people have problems with knowing whether God wants to heal them or not. Jesus came, he said, he came to destroy the works of the devil. The devil came to rob, steal and destroy. Jesus came that he might destroy the works of the devil. And what did he do? He healed and he delivered. Set people free, brought salvation. And the minute that we received Christ in our hearts, something happened in our spirit. Our spirit came alive to God. We became alive to everything, everything that was promised in the Bible. Every promise, 33,000 promises in the Bible, every one belongs to you. Do you believe it? Do you read this book as the truth? That the minute you read something in this book here, it belongs to you? I go looking, digging for gold. It's not always on the surface, you know. Sometimes you just got to meditate on that word and find out what God's trying to get to you. But, you know, if you come with an open heart and ask the Lord, he'll give you what you need. That's what he died for. He wants you and expects you to walk into heaven the very way you are today, just like this. Walk into heaven. My spirit came alive to God. Oh, my, the power of God's here at the moment, so I'm going to stand here, I think. <laughs> <laughs> 
Spirit of God's upon me and upon you. Amen? That's what the Word of God says. For the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to set the captives free, to open prison doors, to proclaim life to the prisoner. Amen? And he said, today is fulfilled in your presence. <laughs> it's here. That very same promise, he opened up the scripture and the scrolls in Luke 4, is here right now. Is here right now. We've got no excuse. Do you know, we become so despondent sometimes. Think, oh, I've asked and I, I don't get it. God says, ask and believe. Just believe. Just believe. Every word that I hear Jesus echo through the centuries. Just believe. Just believe. Just believe. He made it so simple, we make it so complicated. Amen? He said, just believe. What do you need? Some of you have got complex problems. I don't mean you've got a complex. I mean you've got complex problems. <laughs> you've, got, you've got very deep problems based out of where you come from, what's happened in your life. But, you know, Jesus says he's the answer to every one of them. Every one of the problems that you're carrying, he says, pass them over to me. He says, my yoke is light. Amen. He said, just... Cast your burdens unto Jesus, for he cares for you. Cast your burden unto Jesus, for he cares for you. Higher, 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 higher. Lift up Jesus higher. Lower, 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 lower. Lower, lower, put Satan lower. Cast your burdens unto Jesus, for he cares for you. You know, in the early days, any opportunity we had to go and share somewhere, we'd, we'd do it. We were working on our building sites and we had an architect who... Um, who had opened up a ministry into Minda, Minda Home. You all know where Minda Home is. And he said, you know, you guys are always speaking about miracles. Can you come and minister to the Mindas? And um, we went there and he, he was preaching and he was preaching at such a level that, I don't know if the Mindas understood it, but I didn't. <laughs> it was just way past deep doctrine. <laughs> And there's, there's the people in Mindaroo who, who were like, they were just sitting there. They were more interested in getting the biscuits out of the barrel and having a cup of tea. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit spoke to me about the third time we'd been down there because we weren't seeing anything happening. And he said, just lift me up. He said, just lift me up in the middle of their problems. Lift Jesus up. Look to Jesus, okay? Just look to him. And I said, what do you want me to do? He said, teach them that song I've just sung you. Cast your burdens unto Jesus, for he cares for you. And then one young girl, she looked like she was fearful of everything. She was withdrawn. You know, I just, my heart went out to her. But as we were singing, I walked towards her, and she was only about 10 foot away. And her chair shot another 20 foot down through the room. She started shrieking. <laughs> and she got delivered on the spot, came back to her right mind through one little song. You know, we've, we forget who we are. We forget what we've got. And I remember they shut us down out of Minda. They didn't invite us back after that. Do you know that? <laughs> they stopped us going back there because it was disrupting the patients. <laughs> My God, I want to keep disrupting patients. <laughs> I want to keep disrupting people with the presence of God. That's our job. If we get filled up with God, we've got to let him out. 
We have to have manifestations of him living in us. Our lives are totally changed. Can you believe that? Thank you, Lord. I'm going to start preaching now. <laughs> Do you know, right now, this last probably four or five weeks, God's been doing something in me and I've needed it. And um, he's been speaking into my heart. He's saying, I'm releasing revelation to my people. He says, because if they don't have revelation, they can't move on. My people perish for lack of revelation. We have to continually be growing in God. When we don't grow, it's because we've become stale, despondent, and unhungry. God wants us to stay hungry. When we're hungry, we grow. When we preach in this place, we preach the word of God in a very small seed form. And we plant it in your minds. And you go back and some of you meditate on it and think about it. John, today, what we were sharing last week has caused you to think about a few things. That's the seed fermenting and, and, and doing what a seed does. It turns around the right way so it grows up. <laughs> Amen. You notice when you plant seeds, they all come out of the ground. They don't go down. <laughs> they grow. Smith Wigglesworth once said that. He said, you know, revelation knowledge is like that. It's like the corn. You know, like firstly you plant it, the seed, and up it comes like a little bud. Then comes to a fuller bud, and all, then the head comes out on top. So in other words, the fulfilment of that word comes. And if you meditate on it, you're going to start to grow in God. If you meditate on what we share here, God's going to give you miracles because the word of God's going to self grow. Can I, can I just, can I get you just come say what happened to you the other day? Can you? She's shy. Well, I've had a wonderful healing because um, um, I had, um, I was actually, um, Playing hockey when I was 18, and uh, uh, I um, did something to my nose. I don't know what, but anyway, it was always sore. And I think I went to the doctor, but there's nothing he could really do. And anyway, um, oh, look, I'm sorry. That's I, right, I, 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 you're, right. I'm, I'm, you're amongst family here, so they, they yeah, don't care how it comes yeah, out. Yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. I'll have to tell you all, perhaps, on. on yeah, I can't do it. I'm sorry. That's right. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. I'll just okay. forget. That's okay. And God, I need to be God's healed. God's healed you. Thank you. Amen. Yeah, thank In you. In the night. Thank Praise you. God. Thank you, Lord. Family. You know, you should, you should feel at home in this place. Amen. We're family. When something happens to one of the family, I get excited. I'm excited to see Peter here today. <laughs> I'm jumping up and down when I saw him get out of the car. I was expecting him to walk out. <laughs> Amen. And I'm still expecting that. You see, if we have no expectation, you're not going to receive anything. If you have no expectation in the things of God, you won't get a thing. Praise God. Say this, the weapons of my warfare are mighty in God to pull down strongholds. A stronghold is a thought pattern. A stronghold is something that stops you receiving from God. It's something that's got a strong hold on you, a thought pattern that's got a strong hold on you. And God wants to break the power of that on your life. He wants you to start to think and then speak what it is he's putting in you. He's growing everyone in this room. Everyone in this room is growing in an area of their lives. And he said to me, he said the other day, he said, I'm releasing revelation knowledge in these meetings. Who wants that? Five of you, that's wonderful. Revelation knowledge. He's releasing revelation of his business. Not ours, his. He's releasing unto us an understanding of who he is. And he's put this in my heart, he said, if they understand who I am in them, 
they can grow. Based on that revelation, they can grow. So I can grow. If I meditate on Jesus, I can grow. It's the first step in growth. It's the seed starting to come out of the soil. Amen? I can grow. I can grow if I know who Jesus is. The day he intersected your life here on earth, he put something on the inside of you. Do you know that? Most of you don't know this. I know that. He put something on the inside of you on the day of your salvation, the day you gave your heart to Christ, he actually birthed and put seed inside of you. And you know, the greatest thing is as you're walking along in your life, you start to discover what it is he actually placed on the inside of you. You start to discover what it is he put in you at that time. And right through your life, these seeds start to come up. All of a sudden you hear God and you say, oh, how did that come? You want to know how it came. A certain time in your life when you're ready for it, up at Bob's. But you know when that was planted? In seed form, the day you gave your lives to Jesus. And your job is to discover, it's the most exciting thing, <laughs> to discover what it is that's inside of you. To discover what it is that he's placed in there, it's already in there. It's Christ in seed form, incorruptible. You can corrupt lots of things, but you can't corrupt him. <laughs> you can't corrupt him. He came in a perfect form and his word is in you. Jesus and his word are one and the same thing. In the beginning was the word and the word was with Jesus and the word was Jesus. Amen? In the beginning was the doing word, the verb. <laughs> The verb is a doing word. Jesus came and he did the gospel. Something remarkable happened to Jesus when he got baptised in the Jordan by John the Baptist. The Holy Spirit came upon him in power. And us born again believers, one of the first things that happens to us is the Holy Spirit comes upon us in power. Say power. Do you know the revelation he's releasing right now starts with a knowledge of who he is. Then a knowledge of what our job is in him. Then a knowledge of the attributes and the, and, and the, and the character of God. And then this wonderful thing happens. Power comes out of our being. Revelation of the power of God in our lives. Revelation of the power that's in us, that inherent power that you go somewhere, it affects the atmosphere around you. Amen, it does. It affects the atmosphere wherever you go. You speak and things happen. You share and stuff is released. Mate, we were sharing last night, as a matter of fact, we were sharing some of the gigs we used to do, didn't we, Pete? <laughs> Pete, Pete's worked with us, yeah, it'd be nearly 30 years now. It's getting to no, know 20, 27 years, I reckon. 20, how long have we been here? 27 years. 27 years. <laughs> and, and I've known Pete and Meg, Meg not so, as long as Pete, but quite a while we were sharing. We were sharing the miracles. We were sharing how we went to Mount Gambia to do a gig, and next thing we find ourselves in jail ministering <laughs> somehow we got invited into the jail to minister isn't that right what what happened pete you want to say it in your words or you want me to tell them <laughs> we changed the atmosphere yes come on give him a mic put a mic in his mouth will you he thought he was here on holiday <laughs> the things i do <laughs> there's, there's two miracles right um the, the first one was we went into this jail and we had a very limited sound system to work with. And, uh, and so all the, everything was down the front. I was up the back with Raf, and the bass guitar was just way too loud. And so I went to move forward. Raf grabs me by the shoulder, pulls me back and says, where are you going? He says, well, you know, the bass is way too loud now. I've got to turn it down. He says, well, pray about it. 
And back in those days, it was like, what? Pray about it. Come on, man, give me a break. He insisted. So I said, okay, Lord, I want the bass turned down at least half. And I kid you not, within 30 seconds, the bass player turned down. That was miracle number one. Miracle number two, Raph finished his preaching, does an altar call, and these hardened crims, believe me, these guys were really tough, ran down the front to give their lives to the Lord. They literally ran past me, probably knocked me over, but I can't remember that. <laughs> There's a few. <laughs> but they, seriously, and I'm not talking one or two, I'm talking whole groups of them race down to give their lives to the Lord. Praise God. And that's why it's worth doing these things, seriously. Yep. All right? Thanks, mate. Bless you, Art. You need to remind yourself of what God does and how he uses you. Every one of you gets used by God. Do you know that? Subtle little things that he does that touch someone's life. You should remind yourself of those things it's because that's where he worked in you and through you. You see, he's filling you up, but he's filling you up to let it out. He wants manifestations of the glory and the power of God, and you're carrying it. Your glory carriers, the whole lot of you, water walking, faith talking, spirit filled believers, every one of you. But you don't realize that you're carrying him all the time, even when you're not feeling so hot. Amen? He's still there. He placed something on the inside of you the day you gave your heart to the Lord, and he expects that to be fruitful. You're fruitful. I remember when you came into the kingdom. My God, you were a rat bag. <laughs> he was. But I've got to tell you, I look now and you've got a beautiful family and I see God's blessed you in amazing ways, that the hand of God is upon you. In fact, you can take that to the bank. God says, don't be disheartened. You get disheartened sometimes, says the Holy Spirit, but he's telling me right now, don't be disheartened. My hand's upon you. My plan is on you. He said, and all you need to do is spend time with me and I'll reveal it to you. That's all. Just quiet yourself before him and the next step will be shown to you. And then quiet yourself again and the next step will be shown to you. And that's our walk. For all our lives, that's how we walk. Amen. Be strong. Take courage. God's with you. He's going to lift your countenance today. Thank you, Lord. Be strong. Just take courage. There's nothing that's insurmountable for God. Nothing. You know, people say to me, you don't worry about too much. I've got to tell you, I don't. Nisa will tell you, I just don't worry. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. But if I pray, I'm going to make sure it happens God's way. <laughs> All right? If I pray, I've released him to do what he wants to do. And if you're in his hands, you're in the best hands in the world. There's nothing better. He's a miracle worker. He wants to do miracles in you, every one of you. You're carrying miracles. Do you believe that? Yeah? Faith. Faith. You need to release your faith, folks. He's given you a mustard seed of faith. He calls it a measure. He's measured faith into your life. He knows what you can carry and what you can't. He knows what you can handle and what you can't. So he puts that measure in and you've got to tap into that. Faith. You can't please God without faith. you realise that? The Word of God says that in Hebrews 11, about four or six, somewhere around there. It says you can't please God without faith. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Say rewarder. Oh, I like rewards, don't you? <laughs> He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Diligence means, first and foremost, he's in your every thought. He's in every move in your life. I've got to tell you, we're lackadaisical. Every one of us are the same. We get strong with God for a little time and all of a sudden we drop off a little. And we get strong with God for a little time and we drop off a little. God is smoothing that road out. You're going to find you're going to be walking on that highway of holiness. That's where he's leading you. That's what Revelation is going to take you to. He's going to put you on that road of holiness where you know that you're righteous with God. You're going to have a sense that you are the messenger of God at that time for wherever you are. You know, 
In the early days, I would spend hours and hours and hours in my prayer closet. I couldn't do without it. Denise will tell you. Constant. And when I'd come out of that prayer closet, people would be affected because the anointing of God was on my life. It's still on my life. It doesn't diminish. It's still there. Sometimes it works more subtly, but it's still there. Amen. I used to be a very brash person in the early days. You would have loved it. <laughs> but spending time in the anointing releases the anointing in your life, teaches you who you're dealing with, teaches you that God is with you, teaches you all about the Lord, focuses you on Jesus. So when you go into a situation, you are going to speak the wisdom of God into someone's life, direct from the throne, direct from the throne. If I tap into God, I can tell you what God says. I can remember when I was in, in Singapore and there was a bloke there who was lauded and fated in Singapore. He'd just flown into town. They actually flew him in. Can you remember when about five or six years ago when the computers in the stock markets actually spoke to each other and there was a financial collapse. Can you remember that? When the stock exchange went down worldwide, this guy had written a book prophetically and he called it the, uh, the um, what do you call it? The coming financial collapse or something like that. Now, he was a senator for Tennessee in the States. He was also a banker, a merchant banker, had three banks, sold them, got out of banking too corrupt for him so and he'd written this book and the Singaporeans was like the central part of Asia for finance they flew him in when this collapse came they wanted to know what was happening and this guy had a prophetic edge in regard to finance I, I got invited to that meeting I happened to fly into Singapore that day and all all the uh, pastors who were like the who's who are the charismatic zoo over there they said come with us we're going to dinner and we're going to this meeting tonight um and i wasn't due to speak till the following night and they said come this will be interesting this guy has prophesied this collapse and they've flown him in i said oh, okay so I went to this ritzy place really top top class place for lunch dinner and um I was sitting down, Billy Pryor was with me and, and Williams, my prophetic mate over there, and Eddie, we, I'm sitting down at this table and the guest speaker comes in and there's a spare chair right next to me. So guess where he sits? Plonks himself right down next to me to have dinner. And so we're having dinner and people are that and starting to question him on fiscal policy. Anybody know what that means? I didn't either. <laughs> uh, speaking to him about, about financial things, and he had answers for them. And I'm sitting down eating, I'm thinking the food here is really good. <laughs> and he turned around to me when he finished and he said, Ozzy, you haven't said too much. I hadn't asked any questions. I had no questions to ask him. And... Um, he said, you haven't said too much. He said, um, have you got anything you want to ask me? I said, no. I said, um, I said, can I ask you this? I said, do you want to know what God's saying about what you're writing? <laughs> and he looked at me and he took his glasses off. He says, God? I said, yep. I said, do you want to know what God's saying to you about that book you've written? And he says, yes, I'm interested. And so I said this to him. I said, godliness with contentment is great gain. That's what the Holy Spirit put in my heart. Godliness with contentment is great gain. He looked at me and he's got tears in his eyes and he starts crying. He's taking his glasses off because they're all fogged up. <laughs> and he said, you've just given me an answer I asked him for to finish my next book. <laughs> that was 
the last chapter of his new book. Godliness with contentment is great gain. He started crying. He said, will you come with me to my meetings? I said, mate, I've got meetings of my own. I said, but when I'm free, I'll come. So God had me go with him for a reason. Two nights later, I did a meeting. Two nights later, I'm sitting there like, like his guest. <laughs> He's the guest speaker and I'm, I'm his guest. God will make a way for you. Remember, the gift makes a way for the man. And um, if, you, if you allow the gift to flow, I'm going to tell you, you're going to get the shock of your life. You're going to have invitations to the best places and the worst. <laughs> it's not all roses, I can tell you, but it's fantastic. It will always be something that's exciting. And, and he had me there because all of the unsaved finances were also at the meetings and they were peppering him with answers trying to pull him down because of his prophetic edge. And they made a huge mistake at one of these meetings. They just handed the microphones around the room so people could ask questions. And one guy was particularly venomous towards him. And the Holy Spirit spoke into my heart. He said, Raph, get up, go to that man and whisper this in his ear. <laughs> so I did what the Holy Spirit told me. This guy shut up like that. <laughs> because God exposed him, exposed his deepest problem and taught him that God was real. <laughs> and he knew that we'd gone. He said, what did you say to that man? He said, it doesn't matter, it's for him, not for you. But he had to be shut down. And the Lord showed me the man's deepest problem, what he was doing. And he had me there just to protect that man because he was releasing the prophetic word in that country through that man. And so I learned that if I kept hearing God, if I kept listening to God, the revelation that he was giving me would not just set me free, but it would set others free. It would change the atmosphere in a place. It would change the atmosphere. You know, it blew my mind that day. I didn't preach there. But you know what happened? I got an offering from the pastor in that church that day. <laughs> he said, someone dropped this off for you, Raph. I said, really? He said, yep, 10,000 Singapore dollars, which was the same as what the Australian. I didn't realise, but releasing the word of God <laughs> releases all our needs. And the pastor said to me, he said, you're on your way to India. I said, yep. He said, do you mind if I hold on to this for you so you can have it on the way back? Because you'll give it away in India. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been sunk into this place. You know that he just... He opens the door for things that you couldn't possibly imagine. If you allow him out, if you let him loose, there are miracles that most people don't see them. You can be in a meeting like this and he can be doing an incredible work in someone's heart and changing their lives and it's a miracle for that person but you don't perceive it. But if you start to practice this walking with God so you can know what he's saying, this is for you, son. This is what you've come for. This is what you've come for. Oh, glory to God. Romans 12.1. God says, come to me as a living sacrifice, your normal act of worship, so that you can understand what my good, my allowable, and my perfect will for your life is. For I've already placed it inside you, says the Lord. And as you come to me, he said, revelation will come to you of the next step. God says, go ahead and do what you're thinking about. Because I'm with you. There's your answer. Is that what you, is that what you flew in the state for? Okay. There's your answer. God, God wants us to understand. That's good. We don't need to pray now, okay? It's all done. <laughs> oh, he short circuits some things, doesn't he? <laughs> he, he, wants, he wants to do stuff in every one of us. He wants everyone to start moving in the giftings. They're in there. He's already placed them in there. 
There's gifts in every one of you. But you need to discover them. It's an exciting adventure with God. You need to discover that Romans 12. Don't just give it for him. I'd take it for myself if I was you. You know that? I would accept that word of prophecy. Every person in this house should grab hold of it. <laughs> Amen. You can, <laughs> and they're not going to steal it from you. It's yours, remember that. But you guys grab it as well. I would grab it because I want to tell you, you need to know what God's perfect will is for your life. You need to know what it is so you're walking 100% and growing 100% in God. Some of you have got questions of where you should be and what should be happening in your life right now. There's a unity coming back into your family. The Holy Spirit's speaking to me right now. You've been asking, you've been turning around. The last six months, the Spirit of God tells me there's been a turnaround in your life. He wants to bring your family into place. It's coming. I don't know what that means yet. I don't know enough about you, but I do know this. This is what's coming. It's coming. He's he's about to do it. And it's going to be so easy. All the insurmountable things you thought were beyond, God's already on it. He's on it because you've turned. Because you've turned. Revelation knowledge is flowing in this house right now. Do you know that? He said revelation's coming. Do you know, if ever I want to see healing, you know what I preach? Healing. If I want to see revelation open up, the heavens open up with revelation, I preach revelation. I'm giving you some keys here. (laughs) Amen? You want to meditate on what it is you need, and you'll see it. What you need, not what you want, what you need. Amen? Revelation is being released right now. There's never been a time in history like right now where God is releasing revelation because the Holy Spirit is going to and fro amongst the earth Seeking those who do exploits for him. Exploits. That means receiving the word, letting it produce in you, and then go and do it. And that word's going to bring a miracle into your life. Amen? Doesn't get much simpler, does it? Comes, you meditate on it, release it. It comes to you, you meditate upon it, release it. The weapons of my warfare are mighty in God to pull down strongholds. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. Actually, just let me read that because there's something in there for you and I'm going to close on that today. Anybody getting anything out of today? Praise God. 1 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, we've got. Still in one, am I? Mm. I've got a new Bible here. How lovely. Two Corinthians ten. Spiritual war. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Say not carnal. But mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. You can't do it physically. It's got to be on your knees. Okay? It's got to be on your knees. It's got to be in the prayer closet. You don't have to get on your knees. You know what I'm saying. Get into the prayer closet where you're conversing with God. First level of revelation is God speaking to you. Second level of revelation is when someone comes and confirms it to you. But revelation is some knowledge that God has that you need. Something you don't possibly know, can't possibly know, but he wants to tell you. 
because he placed it in you the day you gave your heart to Christ. And you're going to discover it as you're walking along with God. The weapons of our warfare aren't carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Everything that exalts itself against the what? The knowledge of God. The knowledge of God trumps everything else. <laughs> okay? Anything that exalts itself that doesn't come from God is going to become very, very real to you. It's going to be like someone ringing a bell going, hang on, that's not God. Once you get to know God, you're going to know, you're going to discern when someone's lying to you, you're going to look at them and think, that's a lie. That's a terrific place to be. <laughs> Do you know that? Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God Bringing every thought, say this, bringing every thought captive or into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Oh, glory to God. There's your key to revelation knowledge. Bring every thought and make it captive to Jesus and be obedient to what he tells you. So many people don't want to know what Jesus is saying because they're frightened he'll tell them to do something they don't want to do. Do you realise that? They don't ask for fear that it may change their lifestyle. It might change the way they think. They might not be able to do what they've been doing forever in the day. And God is bringing your thoughts captive. He's allowing you to bring them captive. He's giving you the ability to be able to captivate your thoughts. How many people in this room have had trouble sometimes controlling their thought patterns? I've got to tell you, I have. <laughs> I get wrong thoughts and I've got to hold them and grab them and say, no, wait. David, David made a, a whole ministry out of this. Soul, you do what I tell you. Amen? Soul, I'm in charge, not you. Oh, glory to God, people, come on. This is what God wants. You want to find stuff out, but you're not willing to take captive the thoughts. You just let any thought grab you and do whatever that says. How do I know? Because I've done that. <laughs> Amen? But God says... I need you to learn how to captivate your thoughts. Then I can make you obedient to what I want. Then you'll find out what the centre of my will is. Okay? That's when you'll find out what it is that I need. See, when he asks for a living sacrifice in Romans 12, you know what he's asking? He's saying, give in to me. Let me show you what to do. That's the sacrifice. Give in to God. His sacrifice is really simple. Meditate on him. Praise him. Worship him. Use your mouth for him. If you learn to captivate the thoughts, you're going to start learning how to control your tongue. When you start to learn to control your tongue, you're going to start seeing the miraculous in God. Anybody want to get to that place? Amen. Captivate your thoughts. You'll get control of your tongue. The tongue's a really hard thing to control, isn't it? Yeah? The thoughts are hard to control. But we've already won the fight. We already had the victory. And revelation is what will empower you to be able to do this one thing, to capture your thoughts, to speak in line with the Word of God and release miracles. You'll get, the, you'll get the revelation of how to release the miraculous in your life. Release the presence of God. Anybody want the presence of God? I can't live without it. I cannot live without it. And I'm not a goody two-shoe, I've got to tell you. <laughs> but I can't live without the presence of God. We went to the States because the Holy Spirit sent us there to see, um, I was reading a John G. Lake book, a, a biography, 
And while I was reading that, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, I want you to go to America and have a look, see what that man did. One man who set his heart to follow God with all his heart. And I said, uh, when, when do you want me to do that? He said, book your tickets. I said, I haven't got any money. He said, yes, you've never got any money. But if I'm sending you, you have the money. Right? I, you, see, you're already releasing the miraculous the minute you step into faith. You're triggering the miraculous. So I booked the tickets. Denise said, you're not going without me. So there's two tickets. <laughs> Isn't that right? And, um, and then my kids. My kids used to, I used to love taking my kids with us overseas because it expands their thinking and they, they learn things, you know. And um, we had two kids at home. I said, you kids want to come? They said, no, nah, we think we'll stay home, Dad. Party time. <laughs> Mum and Dad away for a month. And so you could see what they were thinking. Anyway, I, I booked the tickets and I had to go and get them. And... Um, I didn't have the money. I didn't have credit cards, you know, like everything I did, it was, I did cash. And I ended up going with a prophet to the Riverland to do some stuff. And I was sleeping out of the back of this room somewhere in the Riverland and I was talking to the Lord. And I, I was a bit miserable. I'd, I'd struck some stuff there that I had to deal with, with some people. And uh, I said, Lord, I said, um, I'm having problems with, with this. He said, cheer up, Raph. He said, I'm here. He said, I've already got the answer to your problems. He said, phone your wife up. She'll, she'll give you some good news. So I phoned Denise up about 11 o'clock that night. I said, how are you doing? She said, I said, I'm, I don't know. I said, I'm feeling oppressed in this place. And uh, I said, but God told me you had some good news for me. She burst out laughing. She burst out laughing and she said, um, she said, I'll tell you when you get home. <laughs> I said, no, no, tell me now, I need it now. <laughs> she said, your money's turned up for the tickets. $7,000. I said, really? I said, where did it come from? She said, you wouldn't believe it. She said, the girl that led us to the Lord that we hadn't heard from in 18 years heard God and sent us $7,000 from America. <laughs> I've I got to tell you, I could write books on miracles. I could write books on miracles. 7000 bucks. I'm jumping up and down. My kids get wind of this and decide... Four days from leaving, we want to go with you, Dad. And I said, well, this is a bit late. I've only got enough for two tickets. They said, no, no, we know you've got about $3,000 for expenses tucked away. Your kids, they know everything. <laughs> and uh, will you put that towards one of our tickets, Dad, and we'll believe for the last ticket. And I thought they had faith, so I phoned up the girl who booked my tickets and she knew us. She is a Christian girl in Brisbane. And she phoned up. I phoned her up and she said, um, I said, can you get my kids on these flights? She said, Raf, she said, you've got 13 flights around the world tickets. She said, uh, most of them have got um, wait listed, yeah, 30 deep. She said, this is impossible. I said, try anyway, will you? I said, my girls are fasting. They fasted on the Monday. Tuesday, their money came in. Another $3,000 came in for them. So there's all our tickets. Only problem now, we're going with nothing in our pockets for a month. All oh, right, you want to get pushed into faith. I want to tell you, you want something from God, you're going to get pushed into a very uncomfortable zone. Something that's going to stretch you because he wants you growing. I'm telling you about growth. This is what I'm speaking about today. He wants to stretch you. Praise God. 
We organise the tickets. We fly to Sydney. But the money still hasn't come in. It's been promised. And the girl sends it, but it goes to a bank in Melbourne. And we're in Sydney ready to go at the waiting lounge. <laughs> Glory to God. The girl at the bank in Melbourne says, look, we won't transfer this quickly enough. I'll walk it round to your bank for you and put it in so that we can draw on it to get our tickets. And we're on the plane half hour later. Is that cutting it short? He'll stretch you. He will stretch you. And we end up in America with 150 bucks in our pockets for a month. You want to come on a faith walk with me? You're going to get very nervous. <laughs> you know that, don't you, Pete? <laughs> You're going to get very nervous because he'll stretch you and he'll stretch me. He wants growth in our lives. He wants us to just to keep on going, to keep proceeding. We, uh, we get to, to um, where did we end up? Spokane. And a pastor that I'd met, I'd had a word of knowledge for him in Melbourne two weeks before, had invited me to his church to bring correction if I needed to. And it was John G. Lake's church that he established in Spokane. And I ended up there and they double booked. There was a King's Kids meeting that they, they ran in America and they had a congregation of all the kids from all over America was, were meeting there. So I wasn't going to preach there, but they still asked me to, to minister to the, to the people after. And um, they put us up in a double tree hotel. I'll never forget that night. No money. We had no money. We're in a double tree hotel. And I can remember the brownies, big hot brownies they gave us. So we're all sitting in two double beds, the kids <laughs> alongside of us, <laughs> eating hot brownies that night. I want to tell you, every step of that trip... We ate like kings. And I said to the kids, I said, look, if I take you, I haven't got money to buy you food, okay, so you might have to fast for a month. <laughs> <laughs> but they were willing, weren't they? They were willing. We did not fast one hour <laughs> of that whole trip. God fed us every day with just abundance. We'd minister. Doors would open. They told me that if I went to the States, I'd have to have bookings because that's the way it is. Well, not with God. God opens doors on a daily basis. On a daily basis. And he, he would take us into places and we'd minister in one place and I'd get an offering for two or three hundred American dollars. Go to another place. We had miracles break out in one place. People who had rods in their backs where they were straightened out. Deaf ears, I'd get their hearing aids and I'd throw them away <laughs> and cause them to trust God and healings would just flow. Now, I want to tell you, it's about to pour out in this place again like that because revelation knowledge is about to release it. Do you realise that? Revelation knowledge, I'm preaching to lift your expectations. Revelation knowledge is about to re be released in this place. And with it come miracles. Because when God tells you something, it's with a purpose. Amen? Okay, let's hold that up right away. Thank you, Father. Father, we just hold her up right now before you, Lord, before the throne of grace. Lord Jesus, you had me praying for her early hours this morning. And, and I thank you, Father. And you spoke this into my heart. You said, take authority over the infirmity. Break its hold and its power by the blood of Jesus. This is spiritual warfare we're doing right now. We're pulling down every stronghold over Jude by the blood of Jesus Christ. We command everything that our Father has not planted to be uprooted in Jesus' name. Pull it up, Lord. 
all the swelling in her brain. Pull it up, Lord. Bring her brain back to normal. In Jesus' name. You paid the price on the cross so she wouldn't have to. So, Father, we ask for the release of this in agreement without doubting for a second. In agreement, Lord, with what your word says. You died for our iniquity. By your stripes we are healed. And we claim it and receive it on behalf of our sister right now in Jesus' name. Cover her by the blood, Lord. Set her free in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. He woke me up about 3 o'clock this morning to pray for her. And for you, Joyce, the pair of you. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. I want to tell you, God wants miracles out of your lives. He wants you to be stretched. He wants you to be stretched because you don't grow without stretching. Amen? Are you willing to say to him, you can use me, Lord? You can use me, Lord. If you can use anything, you can use me. Amen? Are you willing to say that to him? If you can use anything at all, you can use me. You've already placed everything I need inside me. Use me, Lord. Can you say that? You're going to be challenged if you pray this prayer with me. You're going to be challenged in areas that are going to shock you. But I want to tell you, that's what he wants out of this place. He wants a people that walk in the miraculous, a people that walk in the power of God, in the revelation knowledge. Revelation in four different areas, knowing who he is, knowing what your job is, knowing his character. Study the names of God. I tell you, it will reveal the character of God to you. And then walking in the power according to Ephesians. Walking in the spirit of might and the power of the Holy Spirit because he's in there and he wants out <laughs> and he wants out of you. He wants you to take him to certain places he'll lead you and he wants you to let him loose. Amen? He wants you to let him loose. Father, I thank you for this in Jesus' name. And all the saints said, Amen. Sorry. Communion, who's communion? Who's doing communion today? Good. There's another one. There's two of you, one of you, three of you. <laughs> hey. Hey, Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Have you gotten a feed this morning? Two of you have. That's good. Actually, yeah. I want to tell you if, you, if you take hold of what we've been sharing today, there's coming a place of revelation for you that will cause you to do miracles. Amen? Cause you to do miracles. You can use anything, Lord. You can use me. You can use anything, Lord. You can use me. Take my hands, Lord, and my feet. Take my heart, Lord, speak through me. Well, you can use anything, Lord. You can use me. But, yeah, come on, come up and share something, but. He's going through the legal system anyone knows about the legal system that's rife and she seems to be more the victim than the one who's causing all the problems and Raf prayed that something good would happen to my daughter on Monday the they were to have a um, hearing. hearing which was cancelled and they sent my daughter she had to pay thousands of dollars because it was cancelled it had nothing to do with her. She didn't cancel it. They did. So she got on, she sent a text message to the authorities there 
and she told them exactly what's been going on. She has spent all her life's savings for the last three years. Her ex, who's in jail, gets away with everything. She seems to be the victim, but God did a miracle. And after Raph prayed, he said something good was going to happen Monday, and she rang me, and she said they, after she'd sent a text message explaining what they'd been doing to her, they cancelled and said, no, you did not have to pay that, thousands of dollars. And also they've stopped her ex from sending terrible letters. And that has been a blessing because she has been so stressed. And I thank God that he's working in good for her. And thank you for the prayers. Yeah, thank you. Thank Praise you. God. Bless you. Praise God. God is good. You change the atmosphere. You change the atmosphere. You change the atmosphere. You know, if you ask God, he's there. Just expect to receive from him, will you? Thanks, Brother Tarn. Yeah, we're going to pray for you. Now, you have an operation tomorrow. What is yeah, it? No, I'm my throat. The back dangly thing on the back of my throat. Oh, that so epiglottis? Yeah, yeah. Okay, no worries. Okay, have you finished with that, doing that? Okay, stand there a second. And just stand there a second. Praise God. You ready? Yeah. You look to the Lord, okay? Yeah. Thank you, Father. Ramando kiribushia kareya karamasanda rabaraya karabasi divane. Oh, thank you, Lord. Father, you know Luke. Luke, you know his heart. He's your son. Father, I pray for healing to flow even now through his epiglottis. I pray tomorrow he goes in that place. You'll guide the surgeon's hands. And I break all fear off my brother right now by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can you all agree? It's done. In Jesus' name. It's done. It's done. In Jesus' name. Now, what happened to me grape? Oh, there it is. It's all right. <laughs> Better get yours. <laughs> thank you, Lord. <laughs> The bread. You got yours, Eric? You got the whole plate there, bud. The bread representing the body of our Lord Jesus. The body that hung on the cross and paid the price so we wouldn't have to. He said, as often as you do this, remember me. I've got to tell you, as often as I eat, this means something to me. Every meal, breakfast, lunch, tea, as often as I do this one thing, which is the thing I do most in my life, is eat. He said it because he wants me to keep remembering what he's done. Keep your eye on the Lord. Look to Jesus. Look to Jesus and the miraculous will flow through your life. Amen. And this grape, which is symbolic of the blood of Jesus Christ in grape form, washing us clean every time we come to this table. Forgive anybody that's hurt you, will you? It's only doing you harm. Release them from your judgment. And I've got to tell you, 80% of healing will flow into your body. Some of you need to forgive spouses, ex-spouses, children, authorities, as we've just heard. Get cleansed at this table. In Jesus' name. Mm. You know there's forgiveness at this table. Do you know that? There's forgiveness at this table. Probably the key to all our problems. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I think we've had enough today. 
there's a bucket there.